So when we come to liquid propellant rocket, uh, we have two types of system, which is simply uh, gas pressure feed system, and others are a system containing some uh, turbo prop uh, mechanism, uh, which is having a separate gas generator itself. So this turbo prop system is a gas generator. So uh, it feeds the fuel and the oxidizer system okay, to the main thruster. So uh, that is what I want to. So we have monopropellant system, hyperjolic or bipropellant system, cryogenic bipropellant system. And there is actually nuclear thermal, which we will discuss soon now. Okay. So what are the typical propellant types in, in this case? What is the advantage we can gain from those? Okay. Advantage of monopropellant. It is relatively simple, but what is disadvantage? A required heavy uh, catalyst system to operate. That is another disadvantage. Hyperjolic propellants like hydrazine, nitrogen, uh, nitrogen uh, tetroxide. Uh, advantage, long term in space, uh, which is storable, uh, do not require an ignition source because these are self igniting propellant types. Hyperjolic are self, self igniting. One can ignite another. So, but the problem is the safety aspect also one of the problem, toxicity corrosive, so that are the disadvantage. When we come to cryogenic, that is stored for a long time uh, in gaseous form, so like hydrogen and oxygen, methane gas. So these are some of the cryogenic propellants. So advantage is high performance relative to uh, uh, relatively uh, the gain. Uh, it needs uh, to be kept in very cold, and can have very large tanks. So that means uh, storage is uh, for long time. Uh, it costs too much. So these all things are there. Uh, this one is we didn't uh, discuss. So when we simply uh, summarize the, what is solid propellant, what is liquid propellant system, this is these two. Diagram show you very clear image. Okay, so this is liquid propellant system. So how it is, how the gas is also formed in the liquid. So there are some feed system or pumps, uh, oxidizers, uh, fuels. <coughs> so which come into combustion chamber? How they are mixing in the combustion chamber and how the hot gas is escaping through the throat? Okay, this is the throat. So they confine at this point, and then once it gets a small divergence section, then it accelerates soon. Okay. Pressure decrease, velocity increase at this section. By that, the combustion products will get out through the, no the nozzle exit. So in the case of solid propellant, you can see the inner part of solid propellant will be caught by fire using some ignition system or igniter. And then immediately the internal surface start burning in very rapid way. And that produces a very hot gas at this region. So that hot gas accelerates through also divergent convergent nozzle. Then it produces the uh, impulsive or, or thrust force for the rocket, for the, for the movement of rocket. Okay. So this is the constructional feature. So, the propellant itself is a mixture of fuel oxidizer mixture. And the burning, the burning propellants goes like this. Yeah, this is combustion chamber area. So this is a, a constructional future. Okay, this is the nozzle. This is the casing. Now let's come to the hybrid propellant system. It is combination of the two. Now hybrid, when we say it is combination of solid and liquid system. Here you can see from this picture, we have 
um, solid fuel here. It is sometimes called uh, fuel grain. So we have liquid oxidizer here. This is oxidizer tank or liquid oxidizer tank. And there is a, some pressurization uh, uh, containers which pressurize the gas. Okay. So we have these systems and some control mechanisms like valves and uh, the feed systems. So, and there is also an igniter uh, compartment here. Igniters will be attached to somewhere in the aft end of the uh, solid grain. So these things are burned to produce the required thrust. Okay, so this is the nozzle. Uh, this you can see it from the uh, book that uh, George P. Sutan book in your textbook. You can see it. Similar thing. It is the same. There is no difference. There is pressurization gas. Some regulators are there. Liquid oxidizer is here. Some bulbs of the liquid oxidizer is there. Ignition system igniters around here. Okay. So oxidizer injection injecting into the fuel. So solid fuel will be burned and hot gas come through the nozzle like this. So this is a hybrid system. Uh, from some uh, research work done by uh, some uh, scholars, let me see these things. Uh, the history of this hybrid propellant system. Okay. Uh, in 2004, the idea of new reusable uh, uh, orbiter came. So on that dream, Caster is uh, uh, expected to utilize hybrid rocket propulsion. Okay, so on that, the space dev designed this. This is the scientist who designed and built and test the maneuvering and orbit transfer vehicle for Air Force laboratory purpose. So this vehicle is designed for uh, small satellites, both for attitude control, uh, for attitude as well as for the control purpose, and for changing the elliptical orbit into circular. So for that purpose, he designed this um, hybrid propellant system. So what he used in this system, HTPB, uh, hydro, this, uh, the, the uh, HTPB, uh, the name, and it, uh, hydro, not hydro, but the maintenance chemical and no chuvas, Nasa Tracho, Mia Anyways, this the polybutadine thing. Okay, so that polybutadine is nitrogen oxide. So uh, this the polybutadine part is as a uh, fuel, and the nitrogen oxide as an oxidizer. So both of them come together and make a hybrid rocket. So uh, you can see here, hybrid motor is here, Oxidi oxidizer tanks are there, cold gas thrusters are attached here, okay, oxidizer valves are there, and this is the nozzle construction. So uh, they successfully launched this uh, rocket in night, after three years of his work, uh, in 2007, the lunar lander uh, test was successfully performed. And this vehicle is for, uh, propelled by four hybrid motors. Okay? Four hybrid motors are there. These are uh, oxidizer motors, uh, uh, actual tankers. There are uh, hybrid motor cases there. So they, he used this motor. What are propellants used for hybrid system? Look, these are some of the specific propellants. Okay, LOX is there, liquid oxygen. Um, H2O2 is there. So this uh, is uh, hydrogen peroxide. Okay, hydrogen peroxide is there. These are oxidizers as a whole. Uh, nitrogen oxide. Okay. And what are the fuels? RP1, uh, most of the time people uh, uh, in our uh, 
throughout the discussion, many uh, this chemical uh, for certain representations will come. So RP1 means uh, we call it as rocket propellant one, or it is called a refined petroleum one. So RP1 means a refined petroleum one, and HTPB is also there. Okay. Uh, PE. Uh, this is also another name, polyethylene or uh, polyethylene. Mm, it is a opaque name is polyethylene or polymethylene. So these are there as a fuel. So the combination of LOX with RP1 gives us, uh, this is O over F means oxidizer uh, divided by fuel. The ratio, fuel ratio, means uh, our uh, mixture should be in appropriate ratio. What will be fuel ratio? We'll see the, uh, these points in uh, char chapter wise. Uh, specific impulse is another thing. Specific impulse in meter per second. Uh, density, density of the fuel or density impulse. That is kilogram per meter per second. Uh, this impulse comes because second is there. So, so three, for example, for this combination, we can get three, uh, no, uh, it should be 3.55, 3.55 times 10 to the power of six. Uh, here it is 300, uh, 3,450 meter per second. So you can make comparison between each of the combination, which one gives you an optimum combination, which one is least. So the selection depends on our uh, requirement. This is uh, two to five, six, six, means fuel oxidizer mixture, oxidizer fuel ratio. Uh, seven to two, two to five, eight to five. So you can check and you can, someone, some designer must decide what are these things, okay. Combination of uh, ducted jet engine and rocket engine. So in some cases, we use combined system. The air breathing system, as well as the uh, rocket engine system. So how we can use that? We can simply see from the uh, this picture how it is going. So, I'm sorry. Guys, Nante Gala? And then gonna ask what to the system. Yeah, it is there, but... And you got what to number, so let's see. Uh, and this case are going to not come on and anyways, you're a friend so uh, the best example for this combined system is those surface to surface missiles. Actually, what are missiles? What are rockets? What is difference between missile and rocket in Milan? Everything clearly there in the internet. Please Google it and, uh, and then the TIAK. Luckily, what is the difference between missiles and rockets? Fundamentally, only difference actually between the missile and the rocket. Mahalla yallo. Yannen Google arga chu difference actually clear bone ke and iske ulet bami chulu thakam anten bola chu the assignment luckily because zimbe bilo vakar lalu bannas missile ochu. Le, use and for one time use no. one launch organ reuse marriage manchlacho nacho. 
ሮኬቶች ግን ፎር ተመልሶም የሚመጡ አሉ sometimes ደሞ space ላይ የሚቀሩ አሉ means space orbit ላይ የሚቀሩ አሉ ስለዚህ i don't want to explain anything just go through and what are their fundamental difference please go through so surface to surface missile is one of the type of missile so uh, for this purpose this combined kind of uh, jet engines and rocket engines are used okay so in this case the solid propellant boosters fit into the missile uh, away for it is launching platform and discarded after its operation so that the initial booster or the solid propellant one is only for giving the initial boosting means and then a small turbojet engine is sustained into their uh, low level uh, flight at nearest uh, uh, subsonic speed towards the target so that rocket propulsion system is ai technical malet እዚህ ጋር ምን አለ መጀመሪያ ይሄ ቡስተር ነው ይሄ ቡስተር ፊል ሮኬቱ ሲነሳ እንጠቀማለን እዚህ ጋር ሁለት ኖዝሎች ናቸው ያሉት ኤክስፓንደብል ኖዝልስ ዋን ኦፍ ዘ ኢነር ኖዝል will be once the fuel uh, the solid fuel will be completely burn out then the uh, nozzle for the solid fuel will be rejected from the whole system and then the common combustion chamber will be used ziga combustion chamber and now i tell him bezi case ramjet fuel demo ndegena imata na be combustion chamber for for marco the second uh, nozzle alle ziga we have two nozzles one is the inner nozzle this will be discarded from the system once the solid propellant is com combusted so this kind of combination is used for uh, uh, for missile applications like surface to surface there is air to air missile surface to surface missile um, surface to air missile okay nezi rasu yechale course silone nante difference acho na entnachon endit le use le felakko yeah this is the uh, so let's see ram jet alle ezi ga demo solid propellant entin alle yenza combination no malet no another is nuclear rocket engines so these are basically type of liquid propellant rockets so we use uh, nuclear reaction uh, and it needs some nuclear reactor reactor is required in this case uh various uh, components like uh, uh, turbine fuel pumps radiation shields hydrogen gas okay cooling jackets also required during this time okay uh some pressure shields also required and liquid hydrogen fuel tank is required hydrogen is one of the uh, uh the thing which we use for um, nuclear uh, rocket purpose so this is used since 1960s uh, used as an experimental case but uh, still people use in illegal way actually it is not legally permitted but illegal way uh, different countries use this thing and there are three kind of nuclear uh, reaction the fusion fusion and the radioactive decay okay so these are the three uh, process when i say fusion it is just a splitting of one large atom into a small fragments that is called fusion when i call fusion it is just joining of two small atoms to uh, create a bigger one when the radioactive decay is the change of less stable nucleus to the more stable nucleus so this figures show you how the three new and in nuclear uh, process we most of the time uh, use uranium atom uh, we have two isotropy of uranium like uh, u235 and the u238 so those uraniums are more of used for 
for this purpose. And the next uh, important uh, propulsion system is electrical propulsion system. So this can be classified into three, electrothermal uh, rocket propulsion, electrostatic or ion propulsion system, or magnetic or magneto plasma thruster system. So uh, you have uh, given a clear uh, slides here. Please go through to these slides. I will send it soon now. These are electrothermal uh, rocket propulsion system. So we, it uses some uh, cathode and anode process, and it uses some uh, resistor jets and arc jet systems. Actually, this electrothermal rocket propulsion by itself classified into two resistor jet and uh, arc jet. So it is there on the uh, Sutan book also, please read from that. There is a simple construction of electro uh, jet propulsion system. And we use it for the uh, low Earth orbit satellite cases. And this arc jet propulsion system, okay, there are some uh, cathodes, and there are power supply system, electrical power supply system. <laughs> there is a, some swirling injection mechanisms, and there is convergent divergent section of the nozzle as usual, and the arcs will be produced. So uh, this is the plasma which comes out from the uh, uh, rocket uh, nozzle. This electric electrostatic propulsion, this is taken from some uh, research work done by Paras and uh, Raina and Sakshi Sharma, so it is from International Journal. So just read this elect, uh, electrostatic propulsion system. I clearly put all the uh, uh, notes here. It is not like a presentation slide, but I uh, clearly wrote everything for your benefit. Ion, what is ion thruster? So advantage of electric propulsion system. Anyways, I think time is over. So uh, this is a comparison of different spacecraft propulsion system, uh, currently feasible propulsion systems. Yeah. So you can read all comparison from this table. This table